So first thing, select the proper forceps. If you use a wrong forceps, then you'll be in trouble. Okay. If the forceps blades are too wide for the tooth, then you cannot do extraction. If the forceps blade are too small, that also gives trouble. Okay. Just change the forceps, you will get success. Okay. So apply first apply the forceps over the through the gingival sulcus. Apply, just apply and push it as much as apically as possible. Okay. Push it apically as much as possible. For that reason only we have elevated the gums. If you are not elevating the gums, then you cannot catch the root uh, closer to the root. Center of resistance, something they will tell you. So you will be catching no closer to the upper surface then you will fracture the crown so you have to go closer as much as closer to the apex as possible that is where the piezotome helps it removes 0.5 you know, mm of uh, crystal bone then you can that 0.5 mm will make a big difference okay so apply the forceps first as much as apical as possible okay second thing is make sure it is the long axis is parallel to the tooth make sure the beaks are not touching the adjacent tooth for upper when you apply forceps to the molar the palatal beak will touch the premolar the palatal beak will touch the premolar this problem either you have to change uh, different forceps or change the angulation Sometimes the upper molar beaks are not perfectly adapting to that shape, right? You mm -hmm. change in a different shape, it is not adapting. That means the, the, the anagram is quite different, the tooth, okay? In that situation, you can use a curved premolar forceps. This is a very common universal forceps we will be using. For even molars, I will be using this one only. We are not using molar forceps many of the time. This force of the inner forceps of the anterior premolar for maxilla. This one forceps is there. This is enough. Very rarely we use uh, molar forceps because molar forceps are they are very wide and the blades are touching the adjacent premolar. When you give no force, the adjacent premolar is touching your forceps blade. Right? The premolar makes it scratch. Okay. So the blade is the most important part, the blade tip is the most essential part. If the blade tip is not sharp, if it is rounded, blunt, then it cannot hold the grip properly. Okay. So you don't have to worry about this, just buy this, then your problem is sorted out. Okay. <coughs> so as much as apical as possible, okay, long axis parallel right not the beaks are not touching the adjacent uh, tooth then you support the left hand properly stabilize the patient head when you apply force you know start applying the force to the patient head the patient head will move some chairs are worst here the chair is not at all good the headrest is not good the older version of chairs no it will have a depression here the patient head no you cannot move but here the patient head is moving that will make the difference between success and failure you have to ask your assistant to hold the head because when you are applying pressure the pressure is not going to the tooth it's not going to the bone it is going to the bone only if you do like that the head will get extracted but the tooth won't get extracted so you have to hold the patient head you have to inform the patient gently hold the patient head then apply force okay so what kind of so the first step is adapting the forceps in correct position so spend some time in this step don't rush to give force 
proper forceps adaptation, you have to check these points. Then proper support of the with the left hand. Now comes the force part, giving force. Okay. First force should be apical force. Are we giving? Just push it apically. Okay. Just push it apically. How many millimeter you can push? Three mm, four mm. Micron level only. Why we are doing that step? Oh. To severe the prolonged ligaments. Mm -hmm. This prolonged ligaments will get severe. Yeah. See, it is. What is the thickness of prolonged ligament? Forty. Forty micron. Okay. <laughs> so forty micron, it will go. The pronal ligament will get severe and it will induce uh, bleeding. Inflammation will start. Okay. Slowly expansion will happen. Okay. So when you push apically, one thing is you are making sure the force of blades are closer to the center of resistance one. And you are severing the pronal ligaments. Right? You are starting the expansion, your expansion process. Okay, so if you blow air into the balloon, immediately it becomes bigger. It expands immediately. But this bone, it expands, you know, uh, very slow. It takes time. That is the problem. If it expands like balloon, immediately we will extract, everybody will extract. But the bone, it takes time for expansion. If it is ca cortical bone, it is not expanding, it is not at all expanding. That is why when the bone is cortical, you are, whatever force you are giving, you are not seeing anything because the alveolar socket is not expanding. If it is a very cancerous bone or if it is very thin bone, immediately you see the expansion. If the buccal bone is very thin, it is not expanding, it is breaking. If it is very thin, it won't expand, it will break. There is nothing to expand. If it is very cortical, it will not break, it will not expand your tooth will break your tooth will break so the key point is not only the root uh, root length uh, number of roots are uh, the bone also the moment you start holding the molar no, then you will understand uh, the thickness of the buccal bone now for this patient the buccal bone is very thin definitely this will break it's very thick okay then you will feel the differences in anatomy between all patients okay so first apical pressure, then hold the topical pressure, hold the topical pressure and give buccal lingual movement. So the giving apical pressure is universal for all the tooth. Maintain the topical pressure, then apply buccal, buccal or lingual. That is for each and every tooth, there is one rule. Lower premolar means there is no buccal and lingual, just rotate. Rotation. Rotate. Molar means figure of eight. Upper means more towards buccal and less towards palatal. Okay. So extraction, there are two kind of techniques you can see when it comes to applying force. You hold with the forceps like this, like this, like this, like this. Doing, doing. Is everybody is doing? Actually, theoretically, what is the technique? Is it is not like this. Not like jiggling, jiggling motion apply the forceps this sometimes i try i do it but because of lack of patience uh, i am not doing it okay apply next time you try now. Huh? <laughs> next time you do it 99 percent of the tooth will come out with this technique hold it apical pressure and come buckly it means it won't come like this just apply buckle pressure count one, two, hold the pressure. One, two, three, four. ten or fifteen seconds. Then go palately. Five seconds. Then keep the forceps for twenty seconds, relax your muscles. Then again hold it. Slow. Slow. Then keep it. Ortho, ortho, no. all yes, ortho extraction you have to do like this only. Instead of like slow. So when you are applying forceps, then you are you know, giving pressure to the bone, time to expand, inflammation to come. Okay. 
more force towards the buckle, less force towards the. Mm. I will I will like you know VGP statues there no mm. like this <laughs> like this you won't see uh, feel like now we are doing some extraction but it will work nicely and the more you are not doing anything the more chance of success just keep the forceps and like this my sir used to you know visit like this certain like this two minutes rest for you and for me it is good. It is not for rest. It is for the bone to expand. Gauze? Yes. You can ask them to bite. So it gives her some pressure. Um, yes. Okay. Many times what happens? One doctor is trying, wait. I'm giving much force, sir. The uh, tooth is not coming. Six or some whatever it is. The surgeon will tell him, tomorrow give appointment. Tomorrow the surgeon comes, he removes in two minutes. If the surgeon is not coming, that doctor removes, it will come in two minutes. <laughs> So what has happened is, we are waiting one day for the bone to expand. It will expand nicely, it will be like a grade 2 mobile tooth. You are thinking, oh this is a great surgeon. <laughs> Yesterday I tried 2 hours but this guy removed in 2 minutes. What is happening is a lot of inflammation, lot of bone expansion. So the time now, the more soon you want to finish extraction, the more trouble, the more delay will happen. Then you will be searching, you know, NPC, sound or tuber, cutting. So you have to wait patiently. If I am keeping you know, forceps and waiting, I will be tempted to put it again and do something. No? So I will keep forceps and you know, very difficult. We, we must have waited 10 seconds, but we will be thinking I am waiting for 5 minutes. Mm -hmm. The patient also, what is happening here? <laughs> so this you have to manage. Okay. Timing is the key. So when you are applying forceps only, you have to think about these forceps, whether you are applying from the wrist or from the forceps or the legs wide, not very wide, but wide possible. Okay. And closer to the patient, don't go away from the patient and do like this. Okay. This distance should be as much as less as possible, this distance. The more it goes up, uh, you, you can uh, the biomechanical advantage uh, becomes lesser so like this if you do like this then no you cannot give forces forces okay if you are expecting two seven okay Monica, open. so this is perfect for maxilla Okay, this position. So, I am holding the seven and I am giving force away from my body. So, whenever you are giving forces away from the body, it is difficult. When you give force towards <coughs> your body, it is easy. So, see, I am holding for six. When I am holding for six, see the distance here. When I am holding for seven, you see the distance, immediately it becomes less. So how to avoid this problem? You make the patient till like this. Now my distance is. So now it is easy to apply the buckle force. If the patient is like this and if you are holding, then it is difficult to apply forceps. Turn the patient here. Okay. Now it is easy. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now <coughs> when applying for lower molar, we'll cover <coughs> lower. Okay. Instead of straightly applying the forceps, lingually, you know, uh, you are having difficulty in seeing whether the force of blade has gone and catch the proper position. It's still the blade. Now you can see the, like this, like this you can hold. Okay. This position is correct. Okay. If it is uh, anterior, then you can, come on, that's it. This position is correct for upper nalparam. See, you, the patient is like this. Okay. Imagine if I am removing the 8, if some 6 is broken, then I have to difficulty in seeing the parallel row like this. Then what you have to do is, you have to 
make the make the patient hand all in. This neck extension is must have. Now it is better to see it. Massage recovery used to tell the patient, uh, see up, see up. Your neck may pain a little, but when you put we will do it. That much of neck extension you will be expecting. Otherwise, if you do like this, it will. You can bend like that, no problem. For for few seconds, you need to see the tooth and take it. Then you can bend, but not for full time. 